So welcome to this short video on planetary rings. I thought I'd do a short video to just discuss what planetary rings are and a few of the key properties of them, really. So we know Saturn. Saturn has a very significant ring system. You can see it in your back garden with a fairly small telescope. But many of the other planets actually have rings. So you've got Jupiter, you've got Uranus and Neptune. They all have these planetary rings. They're not as larger Saturn, they're not as easy to see. You're not going to see them kind of with a small telescope. Um, so with Saturn, that's the one we're going to have a look at and just note a couple of its key properties, really. But they do all have these ring systems, these outer giant planets. Now, interestingly, it's not just planets that can have these rings. So there have been asteroids that have been discovered that are thought to have these small ring systems around them towards the outer part of the solar system, which is quite an interesting idea. So it's not just confined planets. Smaller objects can potentially have planetary rings. So what is a planetary ring? Well, it's basically just a collection of particles that are orbiting in a common direction around a planet. So on the previous slide, you saw an asteroid. So maybe that's not, that. that's not a planetary ring. It can be an asteroid ring or something um, similar. But a planetary ring is just a collection of small particles. Think of them as very small moons. They're all moving mostly independently and they're orbiting in a common direction around a planet. So that is what a planetary ring is. Now you saw on the last slide, you know, the, the particles there, the rings are made up of a variety of different sizes of particles, you know, from the, all the way up to the size of a house down to kind of micron size, so very, very small particles. But how do we know that? We can't just go and measure them with a ruler. So one way we can actually work out the size of these particles is by looking at the way that the light is scattered off these ring systems. So again, taking Saturn as an example, on the top, you've got forward scattered light. And we can work out the smaller particles from forward scattered light. And at the bottom, you've got back scattered. So what does that actually mean? Well, forward scattered is where the sun is actually behind Saturn and the spacecraft that's taken that image, which would have been Cassini, is kind of where we're looking at. So um, out of the actual screen. And what happens there is the light is passing through the rings and it's being scattered forward um, so that we can see it. And it's the same effect that you would have if you're driving down the road on a sunny day and your windscreen is basically scattering all that light into your eyes. And you've got very small fine particles on the windscreen which is causing a forward scattering. So the smaller particles typically forward scatter more than the larger particles. But you can see th these outer rings are visible in this particular configuration. Now, normally from Earth, we can only see the backscattered view of Saturn or the rings, which is down on the bottom right. And that is just the light that is being reflected back off the ring system, back towards where the light source is. And larger particles are going to typically reflect this light or backscatter this light. So looking at the way the light is scattered off the rings, we get an idea for the size of the particles. And from doing so, you know, they're on the order of meter size at the largest and down to micron size. But you can also work out how thick the rings are, their optical thickness by watching a star pass behind it, because you can measure the brightness of that star, which is shown in the white box. So one of the key things about planetary rings then is that they're generally quite circular. So they're not very elliptical. I mean, if you look at the finer scale structure of Saturn, there is some kind of um, change to that. But as a general rule, they're going to be on a fairly circular orbit. Now, if you know your Keplerian laws, well, we call this velocity that these ring particles have as they're on their orbit, but a Keplerian velocity. And what it means is that the closer to the planet that they are, the faster they're going to orbit in order for them to have that circular, stable orbit. So if you want to work out what those velocities might be, you've got a very simple equation there at the top. But just to give you a visual example of that, for some simulations I've done in the past, I've got a ring system just like Saturn there of all these particles orbiting around it. And then on the right hand side, you've got a colour image of the, the velocity the particles as they're on their orbit and you can see that the closer they are to the planet the faster they orbit and we call it a Keplerian velocity but also if you think about all those particles together 
it's also kind of a Keplerian shear shearing flow. So the closer particles are orbiting faster than the ones outside, so it causes this kind of shearing motion, which actually gives a lot of the structure we see in Saturn's ring. Now, something else that's quite curious about these planetary rings, specifically with Saturn as well, is they're very, very thin. So they're actually only on the order of a meter thick, which means that they're almost just one layer of particles. You remember you know, the size of the particles, they're on the order of about meter size, the biggest ones. So the rings are only a meter thick. There's only really one layer of particles there in some places. And also, they don't particularly last very long. They very quickly will form into moons. So over time, the edge of the ring system will kind of clump into a, a, a moon, and then it will kind of move away. And this is what forms a lot of our moon, a lot of the moons around Jupiter, Saturn, and all the other planets, really. These rings will very quickly form into moons. They generally match the rotation of the planet. So they're kind of aligned to the rotation axis um, along the equator. Now I've got a nice image at the top there, which shows you a couple of planetary rings around a planet, which is obviously an artistic impression. And realistically, that's not really going to be that possible because it will very quickly um, relax down to the rotation of the planet. And the reason for that really is that the planets are not spherical. They're not a perfect sphere. They're kind of bulging at the equator a little bit, which means that there's more mass there. But gravitationally, as the rings are orbiting around, there's a difference in the gravitational force. And it very quickly basically dampens that movement or that inclination so it matches the equator of the planet. So even if it did form inclined, it's very quickly going to be pulled to that um, rotation of the planet. The reason why they're generally quite circular is that if you had a single particle, so remember all of these particles in the rings are orbiting kind of on their own. They're like very small moons. And if they're on an elliptical orbit, they're going to pass into the path of other particles. They will likely have a collision and that movement into the path of others and the collisions they then have stops that kind of outward and inward movement. So if they're on an elliptical orbit, they actually move away from the planet and towards the planet as they go around. But as they do so, they'll collide with other particles. So it dampens down that movement and basically makes them more circular. So it's to do with the collisions between the particles, um, as well as a few other things as well, like tidal dampening. And for a similar sort of reason, really, as to why they're flat. So we know that they kind of become aligned because of the planet's shape. They're a bit wider at the equator than they are at the poles, so there's more gravity there, and it kind of brings the rings down to match. But also, if a particle is inclined, so that means that it's kind of orbiting slightly inclined to the rest of the ring, what's gonna happen is it's gonna pass through that ring twice every orbit. And if it does that, it will likely collide with other particles, and again, it will basically dampen that vertical movement as well. And then one final reason why they're also very flat. So as, as well as having collisions as they pass through the ring twice every orbit, it's the shape of the planet that is also going to basically want to make them flat. Because if, they, if they're moving out of plane, the gravitational force acting on them is not the same as when they're kind of you know, orbiting around the equator. And we refer to that non-spherical shape of the planet as the oblateness of the planet. So if the planet's very oblate, it means that it's kind of quite squashed. And that is one of the reasons why they're quite flat and why they're quite aligned to the rotation of the planet. So thank you for watching. That was just a very short overview of planetary rings and some of the key things that we know about Saturn's rings that can be applied to most planetary rings.